Hi ladies, this is Carla. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. I'm going to do a little project that I kind of discovered early in the summer and uh, I just they haven't had time to really work on them, but I've been working on them quite a bit lately. And it's really so much fun and to see the things you can create and make. I've made several, but I'm just going to share this one with you today and kind of go through the steps on how I put it together. So I don't know if any of you are familiar with Iron Orchid Designs. This was a new thing for me, and I think think it's been around for maybe like three years. There were a couple of sisters who got together and they created this and their transfers. Now they also make molds where you use iron dry clay and they make stamps. Now I'm going to share with you today just some of the Christmas molds. Now this was last year's collection and I was fortunate enough during the summer to find it online and got that. And this came out this year with their uh, collection, their Christmas collection. This one's called Transfer Christmas Valley, and this one was called Figgy Pudding. Now, I have taken one of the transfers out that I'm going to be using today. Let me just go through. I have cut quite a few of these out, but a pad like this would probably cost you around $38. Now, you do get several um, transfers in this but as i said <laughs> i've cut up quite a few and this one had a lot of uh, deer and things like that but you can see you've got your your greenery your holly your little swags uh, this is from another one with the chickens on it there's a bear uh, you get pine all kinds of things and you, as you can see, there are some that are more neutral colors and some that are very colorful. I love this one. Now, let me show you one more on this one because I love the cardinal. I think I know what I'm going to do with it. Okay, isn't that cardinal just beautiful? And these transfers go on just like magic. I mean, so easy, so simple. So that was uh, the one that's out this year, and it's called... Transfer Christmas Valley, and this one is Transfer Piggy Figgy Pudding, not Piggy Pudding, <laughs> and this one I've used several. This is Merry Christmas, and I'll share with you, like I said, some of the ones that I've already done. Some of these are large. There's Christmas tree, and sorry for the glare, and uh, some of them are smaller. And I've used quite a few. There aren't very many of these left. Let me see what this one was. Oh, more of the holly berries. And I just love the little birds that they do. Okay, so let's move these aside. Now, to get ready to use these, I found this galvanized um, container. And I think I got this one at a garage, not a garage sale, at a sidewalk sale. In a little town close by here. So what I did with this is I took DIY paint. It's a chalk paint and it's called Apothecary. And I painted it and I wanted it to look kind of, you know, distressed so it's not a full, you know, coverage because I wanted it to look like it had worn a little bit. And then after... I uh, painted it with the Apothecary DIY paint. Then I went through and I sealed it with Big Top After Show Sealer. And this will keep your chalk paint from uh, chipping. And it will also allow the transfer to adhere to the chalk paint. If you use a chalk paint, you do need to use some kind of a sealer. Now this particular sealer and this particular brand of paint, I get from Jamie Ray Vintage. Don't know if you've ever watched her and her husband. They have um, uh, videos up all the time on thrifting and 
repurposing lots of different things that they find and they're really amazing to watch cute couple cute couple but anyway after I put on the paint before I actually sealed it I took this mold this one is called Holly Lane, and it came out this year. Now, your molds usually run around $25, and you can use those over and over and over and over. And they make their own air dry clay to use with it to make the mold. However, I've heard of people using other air dry clays that seem to work okay. I haven't used another kind, so I don't know. And then all you do after you open it, you want to make sure you store it in an airtight baggie or something or it will dry out on you. So I took some of the air dry clay and I liked, let's see, which one was it? I first thought there were two the same, but they weren't after I got them made. I took this one. This one is like the holly and the, the little berries. And what I did with that was I... Uh, Put that in my mold, and you just squish it down, get it real flat, and you pop it out. And I used a little wood glue. I used um, tight bond wood glue, and you want to take your finger and rub it on the back and make sure you get around the edges pretty good. And then after that, I um, put those on, and then I painted it, and then I took like a whitewash wax and put over this just to make it a little bit lighter. Then uh, I've got my sealer on, so now I'm ready to do my transfer. Now with each little uh, packet of transfers, you will get this little tool. It's kind of like a uh, plastic tool, pretty sturdy, that you will use to adhere your transfer. Now I just want to try to get this as straight as I can and one thing is suggested that if you want to like you could take a piece a little piece of uh, light stick tape. I'm going to use just a little bit of my let me see if I get this straight washi tape on here. I've used it before and it didn't seem to have any issues. Okay, and I'm going with a neutral color on this because I just thought with this color, you could maybe use it with a lot of things. Okay, after you tape that on, and you know you've got it where you want it, you can raise this up. And you want to be careful not to touch any of the transfer or it will come off. And you want to make sure you keep the paper under it until you're ready to transfer because if it does touch anything, it will come off. And once you get it down, you can't move it. <laughs> so let's make sure I've got that as straight as I want it. Okay, then I'm going to kind of rub that down. You can hear that kind of pop in there. And then I'm just going to take this little tool. I try to bend that in so it doesn't pop every time I'm rubbing. And you just rub that on. I did a pretty big one the other day. And I tell you, it's good exercise for your arms. Rub that on. Let's get this out here. And after you rub it on, hopefully we won't need to, but when you start pulling it up, if you find that you missed a little place, you just lay it right back down over where you were rubbing and see if it will take back. It usually does. Go at it now. <laughs> Sorry, to hold that in. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can lift that. This down here needs a little more. 
and see what happens. So I'm just going to take my finger. See, there's a little tip right there I didn't get. I'll go over here. I'm not sure I got those either. And you just start lifting up. I didn't get any of that. Piece there. Roll it up. Little piece there. Now, a lot of my things that I've been putting transfers on, I've been, if the containers, I've been making floral arrangements to go with it. But this one, I think, I made some beautiful, oh, I can't wait to share those with you. I might just go get them and share them while I'm, after I get done with this. I made some beautiful rolling pins using, not Christmas transfers, but some of their floral transfers. After you remove it, oh, can't get it up here. Then you want to take this piece that you came off and kind of rub it over the top to burnish it. take my clear wax and then I would go over the transfer and make sure I have that all on the container. Now one thing I forgot to mention was um, when you put your air dry clay in your mold you want to take cornstarch take it just a um, a little brush and you want to cover your mold in cornstarch and that way it releases much better and it won't stick in the mold when you're trying to get it out all right so i'm going to apply just a little bit of clear wax again this is the diy and uh i got it from jamie ray vintage I'm just going to put a little bit on my brush. Now, you wouldn't necessarily have to reseal this, but I'm just going to because I think it makes it just a little more durable. So, I'm just going to add the clear wax. You could add a dark wax. You could add black wax. Or you could add a white wax. And the white wax is really pretty once you get it all on and then you let it set for a little while then when you buff it off it gives it like a white little sheen on it which is really nice okay i'm just gonna go over this with my wax it doesn't take very much just you know since it is a clear wax now if you were using like the dark wax or the black wax or the white wax um, you might want to add a little more to get the desired outcome all right i think we've got that on there i'm just going to let that set a minute well that's setting i'm going to share with you some of the rolling pins that i've made now the rolling pins I use, let me grab those. We have a little boutique in a little town near us. Like I said, is where I've got 
most of mine and uh, they have you know beautiful things like here's some of the flowers this was geared more toward gardening and seeds seed packets things like that and i've made several things with these things on there some things i've cut out and stuck in there and you know these are just a few of the many things that they make so what I've done, I've gone through and I've cut out some of the pictures of some of these packets that I wanted to use, and I put them on my rolling pins. Now, the thing is, you can layer them. So let me show you what I've done here. Okay. Oh, I just think these are so pretty. This, I painted the black ends. I hope you can see this very well. Sorry, it's trying to adjust my camera and I turned it off. I want you to be able to see this. And this is like, um, I think this is called Farm Fresh Paint on this one. And these are all just transfers out of there. These are overlapping. You can see, but aren't they vibrant? And I just think those are so cool. So there's one. This one I used a dark wax on. I painted it, uh, gosh, I can't remember what this color is called, but it's a DIY paint too. And I liked the roses on the yellow. There it tells you, I can't say, it has fallen greenhouses, <laughs> 1900. And now this one, I decided I wanted to stain it because there were so many wildlife pictures in there. And so I went with uh, a dark stain and I used some of the greenery and a deer and then this little pine cone down here. And I thought that turned out really pretty. It's such a dark, rich color. And I probably used a clear wax over that one. And this one is a transfer of a little barn. And I used the white chalk paint and used a clear um, wax over that and sealer and painted the ends black. I just thought those turned out so cute. And this one, I used, looks like the white wax on this. I don't know if you can kind of see, it gives it that kind of white sheen. And this is just a sheep and it says the Cheviot sheep. <laughs> Okay, Baxter's Agricultural Library, page 553. I mean, they're really neat, those, the transfers. And doesn't that just kind of spruce that up a little bit? And then here's another one. And this one is, um, this is, I think, called uh, Cashew. I think this is Cashew Waverly chalk paint. And then I used part of a transfer and I also cut out a butterfly to put on there. You can see how that goes. I thought these are so decorative. Of course they are for decorative use only. And then this one is a mineral Waverly chalk paint. And then that's it's a rose. I kept it pretty simple because it had the writing and I liked that so you can kind of see how that goes so that is my video for you today and uh, if you haven't heard of the iod transfers it might be something you want to check into now they are a little pricey so if you're making them to sell um, i would price my items accordingly but like i said this one i don't think i'm going to put any um Floral arrangement. I'm trying to put these in here. I don't want to scratch them. They shouldn't scratch because they're sealed. But I think I'm going to display my um, rolling pins in this at my craft fair. I might be able to get that many in there actually. I think that'll do it for now. But anyway, I think that is so cute. And even if you have that in your kitchen, you could display those. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and glad you stopped by to see me. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please hit that little like and subscribe button. And until next time, bye-bye. Oh, wait a minute. Before we say bye-bye, 
I thought that felt kind of, uh, what I want to say, not sticky kind of, but you want to buff off your white wax and it's been on there long enough, or your clear wax. But all I have to do now is just take my clean cloth, this actually is clean, it's been washed, and I'm just going to buff off all that clear wax, buff it down. Then it will be ready to either display or sell or make an arrangement in, whatever you would want to do. And since I, I'm sitting here, I've got another one that I've done. I have, I'm going to make a floral arrangement in this one, but I don't have it. I just put this in there for now. That's not the way it's going to look. But this too was like a little galvanized hanger. And then um, I painted it black. And then I took, um, no, actually I painted it red except for the back. And no, I painted it black. So I'll think about it here. Painted it black and then I took the red and I kind of um, airbrushed it or dry brushed it over that to give it that kind of you know, distress look with the red and the black. And like I said, I'm probably going to put, make a um, wildlife, you know, arrangement to go in it. So anyway, with that said, I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday. It's been a beautiful day here in the Ozarks. So until next time, bye-bye.